Mike, I think the big question that everybody has every hurricane season is, okay, how's it going to turn out for Tampa Bay? And just overall, how many hurricanes do the forecasters think there's going to be? There's a couple big ones that we talk about in the news, that the Colorado State one that comes out every year, and then NOAA, the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration. What are those two groups saying about the 2024 hurricane season? Well, it, everybody's saying the same thing. It's going to be a busy season. All the uh, cards are on the table for it to be uh, like some of the busiest seasons we've ever seen. That doesn't mean that you should be in a panic. That doesn't mean that it's going to hit here, uh, but it just means that there's going to be more storms out there because of the way the weather conditions are shaping up. All right, let's talk about Colorado State and then NOAA. Mm -hmm. What are they actually predicting? Well, they're both predicting above normal seasons, high numbers, high numbers of uh, major hurricanes too, probably forming out further in the Atlantic and, and developing into major hurricanes. Uh, last year we had an El Nino and the numbers were lower. So some people have said, oh, they say the same thing every year, it's gonna be a bad year. Well, actually last year they didn't. Actually last year they were a little low. Um, Last year we had an El Nino, this year we have the opposite with La Nina. So that sets the stage for a busier year coming up. And remember, last year we got hit by, we almost got hit by Idalia in a pretty quiet season. So all it takes is one. I always get confused El Nino and La Nina for the people who can't remember like me what are those weather phenomenon and mm -hmm. how do they impact hurricanes? Well, it's the water temperature in the Pacific, in the equatorial Pacific. So if the water temperature out there is warmer, that's an El Nino, that's what we had last year. We had that and we had more wind shear over the Atlantic. So it was tougher for storms to form and when they did form, last year we had a lot of storms that formed and they went north out over the open Atlantic. This year we have the opposite, we have La Nina <clears throat> that is colder water in the Pacific. When that happens, the wind shear in the main development region of the Atlantic is less. And why is that? Uh, because it, it, it changes the wind patterns, and so the upper level winds in the Atlantic are not as strong uh, when there is a La Nina. So historically, some of the most active hurricane seasons we've had have been transitioning from an El Nino to a La Nina. We did that in 2020, and we had a very busy hurricane season then. So we can go all the way back to the 70s and look, when we're transitioning like we are, usually the stage is set for more storms in the Atlantic. There's one other factor this year, and that's the water temperatures in the Atlantic are at record highs out over the main development region, not necessarily out you know, off the coast of Boston, off the coast of Boston, you know, that area of the North Atlantic isn't that bad, but in the main development region, out in the coastal Atlantic and back into the Caribbean, water temperatures are at record highs. So you combine that with a developing La Nina and you get these really high numbers in the forecast. A lot of times the storms develop off the coast of Africa mm -hmm. and then start coming our direction. So we have maybe weeks in advance where we can see what's happening. Um, how often is it that the hurricanes or the storms that precipitate a hurricane, you can spot that far away? And how often is it, well, they're gonna be closer to us out in the middle of the Atlantic? We, you would call those home brood. And sometimes they'll form pretty close to land. And that's, that's kind of the ones that kind of get us a lot of times. A lot of times the long trackers will turn out over the Atlantic before they even get to Florida. So this type of setup, there should be more long trackers coming off the coast of Africa. The water is very warm. The wind shear is very low. The last couple of years, the wind shear has been pretty high out there. There have been a number of storms that just got ripped apart before they could do anything, especially last year. So uh, maybe they got a name and then they fell apart in the Caribbean. That probably won't happen in this type of environment. So there's a very strong signal in the Caribbean, and it goes from uh, the coast of Texas and the Gulf of Mexico across the Yucatan all the way through the Caribbean of a, a very active season, uh, starting out in the Caribbean and then maybe up towards the Gulf of Mexico. So there's a very strong signal for that this year. Not, you know, we just have to take it four or five days at a time with each individual storm. You've been at this 
for a long time. You've kind of made a career of studying hurricanes, reading books about hurricanes. It seems like the predictions have, have gotten more accurate. And you said besides the two ones that we quoted with the predictions, Colorado mm -hmm. State and mm -hmm. NOAA, there's all kinds of weather organizations out there that are, are making predictions. Um, and it kind of reminds me of the sp spaghetti models. We see all of these different lines, you know, when there is a hurricane or a tropical storm and where it may go. And of course, in the beginning, they could be all over the place. As they get closer to land, they become more in agreement. But as far as like the predictions for how a season is going to go, over time, do you kind of feel like all these different organizations, particularly the ones that we, we tend to quote, that they've gotten a little more accurate? The, uh, the main thing to remember is it's all, it all started as research. And Colorado State started it with Dr. Gray for the insurance companies. They were funding it because the insurance companies wanted a kind of a heads up what kind of season it might be. And then people started paying attention when he started being right. And then it started becoming news. And then uh, Noah had to jump in because Dr. Gray was getting all the publicity. So Noah started theirs in, I, I think it was uh, uh, 1999, I believe, when they started theirs. And so uh, since uh, National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, NOAA, they are the parent agency of the National Weather Service. And uh, when they started theirs, this is the highest forecast they've ever done, the highest number of storms that they've ever done in about 25 years. So that's an interesting thing. Uh, but yeah, there are probably a dozen different universities and companies mm -hmm. that do their own forecast, and they all say the same thing, that it's gonna be an active season. Uh, I, sometimes we hear things in the news that say, our storms are, are coming more often and they're getting more severe. We're getting you know, more powerful storms. It's gonna get worse and worse and worse. Does history bear that out? I think there's a lot of people that are, might be saying things like that that are pretty naive about how bad the storms were in the past. 1940s, Florida got hit by 11 major hurricanes in 10 years. Really? 1930s were bad, 1920s were bad. So there's, there's a lot of, and who knows what happened before the 1800s, well, thousands right? Thousands of years ago. Thousands of right. years ago. Uh, we probably got hit in Tampa in 1848, and we don't hardly know anything about that hurricane. Because there weren't as many people here, and the reporting wasn't the same, where you, know, you go from having tens of thousands of people in Florida back in the day mm -hmm. to having more than 20 million, mm -hmm. and all of the buildings right on the coastline so that when a storm does hit and it's a major storm, the damage is more catastrophic. 1921 hurricane, we didn't even have an anemometer. We don't know how high the winds were when it made landfall. Right. We estimate it was a category three because of the storm surge and someone had a barometer and they measured the pressure. And that was in 1921. So up until the modern era, we really don't know what was going on out there in the Atlantic. So there's a lot of unknowns. The, the, the thing to remember is that we are naming, the Hurricane Center is naming a lot of things that would have never gotten named in the past. Give me an example of that. Uh, we call them the shorties. And when we show our, our board for the year, we put the, the uh, accumulated ACE, accumulated cyclone energy on each storm. And every year there are a number of storms that have a one or a two, very low numbers, or there were a tropical storm for a day or something like that. And every year we can always find four or five examples of storms that would have never gotten a name in the past. Now, the Hurricane Center says we have the technology, we should name these because that would mean the climate records are not skewed for the future. Okay. Okay. So when they see something out there, it gets a name and some of them last a half a day or a day. So yeah, we're having a lot more named storms than we used to. So then you go, okay, well we're having hurricanes are easier to define, easier to find, and there's not that big of an increase in the hurricanes or the intensity. And remember, measuring the intensity, we usually do it from satellite or flying a plane through and dropping drop sounds. We didn't even have that years ago. And it wasn't until about 2000 that the drop sounds had GPS. So before 2000, they would fly through the hurricane, drop the sounds, and, and they guess. just kind of guess where they went. Now they have GPS and they know exactly where they are. 
but that's only 20 something years ago. So we're getting a lot more data on how strong the hurricane is that we never saw in the past. So when you compare that, it's really hard to compare and say over the last hundred years, we've had this happen or this happen. You know, a hundred years ago, we only knew when a hurricane hit, when it hit something or a ship went through it. So how much more accurate, let's say over the last 20 years, mm -hmm. 25 years, with uh, dropping these signs, what do you call them again? Sons. Sons. Sons, yeah. yeah. Um, I've actually been on a Hurricane Hunter plane mm -hmm. that, that did that. With that, radar, satellite technology, more and more satellites that are more accurate, how much more accurate can you be as a meteorologist compared to 20, 25 years ago? The track forecast, which you see with the famous cone, right. has gotten a lot more accurate. The errors are lower than I ever thought I'd ever see in my career. Now, with that said, a lot of the storms in recent years have behaved pretty well, too. They haven't had anything like Hurricane Easy in 1950, which hit us and did two loops offshore, you know. So the storms have been a little bit more behaved, but still the track errors have improved dramatically. Gives us all a lot more confidence. The uh, intensity was the big problem. And the intensity forecast has gotten a lot better. Uh, that was something the hurricane researchers said we're going to really concentrate on getting the intensity forecast better. And it has. It's improved in the last few years. So that gives you a lot more confidence when you see a forecast. We know the track models are getting better and we know the intensity forecast is improving. This particular year, when all of the models seem to agree, we're gonna have a, a busy season with a bunch of powerful storms. For the folks who are watching on TV, what should they be looking for? And when they're first hearing about a storm, mm -hmm. uh, to say, well, maybe this one could come to Tampa Bay. Do it the same way every year. Prepare the same way every year. Max Mayfield, back at the Hurricane Center, many, many, many years ago used to say, you win the battle against the hurricane in the off season. So prepare the same every year. Make the precautions with your home, your family. If you're in an evacuation zone, know how to get out. Do that the same every year. And then, I always like to say, during hurricane season, have the weather for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Yeah. Check in in the morning, check in during the day, check in at night. Something can happen, something can change. It can, we've seen it happen, it's changed a lot. You, wake up in the morning and this isn't a threat, and then later on we're like, uh oh, this is coming this way. And then the final thing is, take it like five or six days at a time during hurricane season. We can give you a pretty good idea if there's anything out there, looking out three, four, five, six days, if there's anything that's gonna be a threat during hurricane season. So you start watching it, maybe it's four days out, maybe it's five days out. The problem on the west coast of Florida is we usually don't have that much time we're not in Miami where they can see it coming for days and days and days. Usually something that threatens us kind of comes up pretty quickly from the Caribbean. So uh, just take it four or five days at a time, see if there's anything out there that you need to be concerned about. But don't be in a situation where you have to get ready tomorrow for the hurricane with your home, your business, evacuations, that sort of thing. Have a plan. We're at the 20th anniversary of 2004 mm -hmm. when Polk County got hit by three hurricanes. They came through the Tampa Bay area. It was uh, really something for a hurricane. So I have kind of, I guess, a curiosity question for you. I was covering those hurricanes. You were on TV uh, covering those, those three. How is it that in, in one season you could have three hurricanes Mm -hmm. kind of took dead aim mm -hmm. at one county. Well, and when the pattern is set, the pattern is kind of, some of it's dumb luck. Yeah. But when the pattern is set, in Florida the pattern was set, but we've seen this before. We've seen it where 
uh, you know, in the 1950s, uh, it was the East Coast. It was the Carolinas and the East Coast. We saw in 2020, Louisiana kept getting hit time after time again. So sometimes you get into a situation where the pattern is just kind of locked in and the tracks are very similar for the entire season. That kind of happened in 04, even with Ivan hitting up in the panhandle. Yeah. That was an, it was kind of all in the same group of right. storms uh, that came in. But again, some of it is just dumb luck, like Gene took an entire giant loop in the Atlantic and ended up hitting Florida at Stewart in the same place that Francis hit. You know, that's, that's, that's no other way to describe that is that's just a coincidence. It's just bad luck that it hit at the exact same place and then it came inland just like Francis did. Yeah. All right, Mike Clay, thank you. Okay, you bet. Thanks for watching our YouTube channel. For more stories in your communities, click the subscribe button right here. You can also download our app or watch us on TV for the latest news and weather updates every 10 minutes and more. We'll see you then.